certainly not a bad spot to play him as a team back. mid. Phantom Assassin. All right, whenever in doubt, go with Phantom Assassin. Especially when you have a Magnus. Yep. Very stable carry. Does okay against the demon lane. Can't really harass him out. They kind of just trade farm. But it also gives them a Ten late game core, remaining. which is capable of dealing with the life stealer. Mm -hmm. Five seconds remaining. Yeah, but when the life stealer gets level twenty, has a radiance, has that evasion talent on top of that, it's a bit more difficult for Phantom Assassin to be uh, effective Dire against him. Bad. So not the ultimate answer in my opinion, but it's good. Slaughter. Ban from Gambit. Interesting. So they're expecting uh I mean that could have definitely been like an offline slaughter or a position four slaughter as well, I suppose. It's crazy enhanced damage. Ten seconds remaining. Yeah, Slaughter is just really good against Lifestealer. Takes advantage of Lifestealer's main weakness, remaining. which is his armor. And also just a guaranteed bash for the Rage TP or in fights. It's a good ban for sure. Yeah. So now Namiga, again, banning against Gamma right now is, is a little tough because they really could do a plethora of things. Uh, we just saw Rubik mid last game. They, they could Nature's Prop him mid. They could final pick him mid here. I'll just run Rubik Nature's Prop as support. So not, not too sure who you go with. There's always the Visage there that it could be a safe one, but with the life stealer, it's not as likely. I would, I would think. To see, it's yeah, this not... looks like a, a much slower tempo game from Gambit mm -hmm. so far. You never know; the last pick could completely change that, of course. But yeah, much more typical lineup for a lot of teams. Even not the unique Gambit Dire way here. Team pick. Ooh, they banned the Earth Spirit. That's I mean, that's a good one. <laughs> Where's an Earth Spirit? Just saw it previous game. So that's uh, one of those specialty heroes we'll see taken out instead. And now an Amiga. Could, could just simply be the Viper mid, and now they're looking for a support themselves. Ten seconds remaining. Unless they want to run the support Magnus, then an offlane. So it really is hard to, to gauge Five for them, too, remaining. What, they, uh, what they're looking for here. Yeah, I don't really like support Magnus these days. It just doesn't do enough in the early game. You just kind of become a empower bot. And even that is pretty expensive Radiant for support Magnus. Pick. So Enchantress. So. Okay. Would not have called that hero. See nothing really good to dispel. But maybe a tool to deal with the treants from Nature's Prophet in the early game. Yeah, well, Life Stealer doesn't really care remaining. about the Untouchable that much, though. And no. Uh, Five seconds remaining. Eh, interesting pick. It's not the Chen matchup either. Yeah, well, has that uh, massive slow with the Enchant now too. So to help uh, Phantom Assassin stick on targets, I guess. Another way to look at it. You may now select your heroes. We're going to see the Alpha Ninja Invoker. I have not seen him play this hero. Wasn't aware it was part of his arsenal. Let's be honest. He's a mid player. All mid players play Invoker. That's not true at all. <laughs> you can name several that don't. Chessy well, and Limp come to mind. <laughs> oh, yikes. Yeah, that's true. But this is Apuninya that we are talking about. So to be expected that he can pull this guy out. And pretty good against most of their heroes. Heavy magic burst to deal with the PA, the Enchantress. Lots of control to deal with the Bane. Counter initiation for the Magnus. And we do see Sunlight picking up the PA. Yeah. And also... So that's another thing is PA is really good against Invoker and lane. So I wonder if they even just pick the Invoker to try and force the PA out of the position one role. Okay. Well, then what does that do? If he's if she's well, really good against Invoker, then 
Well, the thing is, is it means that you now have a Viper safe laner, which is not his best role. Yeah, I guess his levels will be a little bit behind, but uh, it seems a little funky it, to me if that's the idea. Well, it, it slows down the Viper quite a bit, and you know the PA he's he's gonna be a it's, it's basically gonna make Sunlight play the position one. I don't know. I, I think it's kind of an interesting way to to do this, and we do see an offlane Ench being the the pickup as well. So. Yeah, notice that and chosen one. He is uh, he is their offlane player. Yeah, and I go back to it. It's, it doesn't seem like a an enchantress game that's like that great, but um, man, we'll see some special stuff here. Yeah, I think it's mostly for the laning because normally you'd have the the Nature's Prophet being your safe lane support, harassing with the Treants, harassing with his really good right clicks, Life Stealer, um, and Nature's Prophet have pretty average to bad attack animations, which can definitely be abused with the Untouchable early on. Of course, the the Rage is good against Life Stealer later on, but early in the laning stage, it should be pretty easy for this Enchantress to just like completely pelt away at the life stealer and we do see he goes for the blightstone as well which means that he's going to do extra damage to the life stealer who has very low armor Thanks. okay well again last picking it for a good reason so uh yeah perhaps for the lane domination big part of it um, support magnus is weird though yeah i i I know you said that earlier, and kind of with you there, it, it, it feels support Magnus just feels very underwhelming. Um, I understand the idea that you want to be an empower bot; it kind of allows him to have more freedom with that earlier on. But yeah, he's, he's, he drops off compared to like an Earth Spirit or you know whatever else these position four Tusk, etc. These these uh, position four Roamers that we're used to seeing, not nearly as scary to deal with. Bottom yeah, spot. It does get better in the later game, though. Well, yeah, I mean, he's, he's going to bring the RP still, of course. Yep. And eventually get a blink. So there will always be that threat. And did he? Oh, no, they actually got the bottom rune themselves. So it's a two-for-two two split on the baddie runes. Uh, I did notice Afanish uh, went the Quas early on. So likely uh, to be a Quas Wex build instead of the Exort with Sunstrike setups. They Don't have, okay, I mean, sprout traps, lift into it. But uh, likes the idea of control more earlier on. And there was the, isn't there that ghost walk talent now too? I'm actually curious to see if that's a possibility. See so come out, just yeah. use that more often. Definitely could be. Um, the Quas, he could still go for the Exord though. I, the Quas is definitely just giving him extra regen against the PA early on. But good, good point. That, actually, I think you could be right on it. We'll see if he gets the expert there because of the dagger spam. Yeah. So, yeah, he still might go Quas Expert. We'll, we'll see here soon. I'm trying to, like, think this game. Yeah, Quas Wex is, like, there's nothing that's – it's very they, – they have okay control. Yeah, may, maybe they could use it, actually. Their control is a little light. And it allows the Quaswex build also allows you to be more active as the Invoker Hero himself compared to the X where it's just more about like landing sun strikes over the map, which is nice potentially. But yeah, as far as being more involved, you get that Urn of Chorus Spirit Vessel, and you're moving around setting up cold snap kills. Yeah, definitely. I mean, we can see though that the the point in Quas first is allowing him to trade super well with this PA in the in the lane. Top lane, afterlife. It's gonna be slept up, take some good damage right here. He might have trouble getting away. He's got some good regen with a Seder even. Is it enough though? I don't think it is. Zitrax gets the kill on Viper. Immersion, he was off doing something else. A little bit busy right there, and they took full advantage of it. Radiance top tower is under attack. So much for Doom being great at surviving in the lane. They he gets first blooded. The matchup there, and it is uh, the Quaswax, so just to yep. outright confirm now. It's that PA I, in the middle. 
I definitely have also seen though that it's not like a full on cross wax. They get a couple of points early on, but then they just end up maxing exhort anyway. Saw the top kill. It's some revenge for Afterlife using the Hadouken <laughs> to take out. Tie it at one hero kill apiece. How's uh, how's is that bottom lane going? I assume Enchantress is doing pretty well. It's middle lane. It's going to go no. like, Tornado EMP, Cold Snap, Sunlight. He's heavily harassed, but it'll be fine. So Enchantress is not doing well? It's not going well at all. Okay. <laughs> He's got 5 CS to Dahawk's 22. Oh, yeah, he's or, being bodied by yeah. Nature's Prophet a bit. Top lane, Rubik goes down. We see it off uh, to the left there, barely. Bane finishes the job. Look at Viper. Yeah, I'm, not, Jeez. I'm not so sure about this Ench build. He's not even putting points in Untouchable to trade better with the Nature's Prophet. He's just going for more points in Enchant and Heal. So I'm not totally sure what the thought behind this Enchantress was after all. To lane win. <laughs> Seven and three CS. Compared to 23 and 10. Yeah, not too good. And we'll see how it develops here throughout the game, but yeah, not a hero that brings team fight. Not an aura builder necessarily, so it's they, they have to have some game plan, of course, around it. It's, it's just a unique thing right now for an Amiga. At least in this in this case here. I know chances we've been seeing lately before people freak out, but for this game, it, it does feel like a off the wall pick a little bit. Yeah, especially to take it last. Mm -hmm. Yeah, usually you see it early on. Sunlight, he's. Evasion's helping a little bit. The blur activated, comes out though. Affinage wants the kill. And FNG instead will die. He's kiting so well. He attacks a tower even. Oh no. Invoker almost oh. dies because of that. But finally, we'll just run away. PA, hell of a job surviving there. It Rex top lane. He might be dead. Hadouken. He cannot avoid it. That big purple ball. So the Seder devours doing some work, not only with the regen, but several kills now with the ability cast. Shockwave, I think it's technically called. Yeah, Doom doesn't care about Viper's harass in the laning stage. He's got infinite regen. So Gambit, I think, getting what they want out of this laning stage so far. Speaking of a Seder, chosen one, he's got one of his own now. Bottom lane, here comes Magnus, but again, Nature's Prophet. He rotated mid, kind of backfired on him, but he's back to the bottom. Being annoying as always, Immersion. Rubik's trying to run, gonna be slept up though. Fishman puts in some auto attacks, eventually sleep's gonna wear off, and Zitrax will be able to follow some good damage. He's taking some damage though against the Doom, and the sleep, okay, it's, I was gonna say, sleep almost backfired there, it feels like, but. He yeah, eventually goes down. So there's enough uh, damage overall. Fishman, he might just commit suicide. No, he's actually going to cut through. And wrap around has Viper. TP in from FNG. So now they're going for the turn kill on him. Blocking slightly with the Triant. Well, played by FNG. Yeah, he blocks his path. The micro. Yeah, nice one. Very well played. This guy's good. Great captain, great player. So we've no talked longer about. great hair feels bad. Yeah, you know, we were mentioned <laughs> we we're talking ourselves before the cast here. No longer that long blonde hair. Maybe with them uh, finding a strong team here in Gambit once again, grow it out. We'll see. <laughs> Gonna spawn some trinkets at the top lane. Fishman does have a double damage rune though on that bane. Yeah, although they want to. Okay, the sprout block not really blocking, unfortunately. Spain is owning right now with DD, but he might be very out of position. Yeah, he was just running at FNG. I mean, he didn't really have mana for brain sap, so that was a misplay there. He goes down. Zirax lifted up. Frontal Blade. Do they have enough chase Grant. to kill him? Three blocks again. It's not enough, though. Astral TP's in. Here comes Fishman, the skewer forward, and they turn kill. Zirax gets it. Immersion is in there as well. Mid lane, they're going back and forth. Very low, it looks like, but back to the top. Viper goes down. Rubik's dead in the trade. And they're going to still keep trading here. FNG, no, the blocks again. <laughs> he is a hell of a job with these Treants. So comfortable to sprout up to prevent Magnus chasing. And FNG will live. Man, this is, this is a very action-packed game number two early on. 
Yeah, support Magnus feeling pretty weak right now as far as contribution to these early engagements, but we'll see how it pays off later on as he empowers the PA over and over. Well, Doom's just gonna come to the middle lane. <laughs> They're tired of the top lane. I guess they got the tower kill, so it makes a lot of sense. And Gambit, in typical fashion, they had mid. They're gonna take out the mid tower. It's somewhere to last game to. You, you saw these early tower kills happening. This isn't as obvious as a push at you lineup, though. And they're making it work as Fishman's caught. EMP, cold snaps, he's dead. Why did he even get yeah. close is beyond me. Yeah, there's uh, the Quaswax Invoker, too much control. And while they don't have any of those traditional pushing heroes outside of the Nature's Prophet, and you get the Doom with a bunch of HP regen, you bring the Nature's Prophet in, you've got the Invoker to you know continually tornado waves and stuff like that. You can definitely still push. Create space for this life stealer all the time. Oh, I wonder if Invoker, the Midas meta right now, obviously Invoker is a hero that you would expect to see that on, especially being in the Midas meta, but we haven't seen a lot of that urn build instead. So bottom lane, by the way, he TPs in, the chosen one. Untouchable has been leveled up now, but with the initial rage from Dahawk, and he didn't care while that was active. So they, they do take him out. Immersion goes down at the top lane. We're big to the... Viper. So a bit of a trade there, favoring Namiga, actually. As far as the gold swing. And you do see Viper's going a hand of Midas himself, so we're not going to see that rush into an Atos build. FNG is caught by the sleep, by the way. Trying to TP out, get some tornado help, only hit the one. Still heavily slowed down. Sunlight wants this kill, but at what cost for him? Now they get the kill, but Sunlight, okay, he's still manning up and power applied. FNG. He has to somehow keep running. He doesn't have mana, though, to work with. Has no mana for Ghost Walk. Maybe the wand in two seconds. Wand, Ghost Walk. He gets it off. No, oh, but they have a sentry. Nice. So no go. Good job. Nimiga supports carrying detection. Yes, an invoker. Yep. Um, yeah, mentioning the Midas, I, I definitely think that this kind of goes back to that potentially baiting the the PA to be a mid laner for the Invoker. Because if you actually think about these heroes, PA, yes, you can get off to a good start and kind of be a tempo controller, but because you have the PA and the Viper as your two main cores, you want the PA to be farming. And so the PA in the mid role is going to have that extra boost in experience, which normally would transition into tempo control, running around the map getting kills, but in this case, it's still just going to be farming. So PA's game doesn't change. Viper, however, is a hero that needs to be ahead, really wants those extra early levels, and in this case, he's just going to be farming anyway, yep. going for that Midas, because he's the safe laner. See what you're saying? And yeah, so changing up the build even, and F9 supports to the bottom lane. He is going the urn build, and hasn't even gotten the point of the into uh, Exor yet. So he doesn't have full access at this point, but take a look at the odds. Demiga, 6.7 at 1.1. And now with Gambit up 1-0 especially. Makes plenty of sense there. 1xbet.com. Head over. Just put bet on set odds if you like. As top lane, Gambit. They would like to set up a kill up here, trying to bait out the Lifestealer. Dahak is... Farming the creep wave. I don't know if they're spotted or not, but either way, FNG, he comes in with a sprout. They're just collapsing on his hit racks. They even have a Doom. Gonna apply it, and he goes down. Another Toxin was thrown up, but Fishman, Fiend's Grip, he catches the Hawk. Here comes the TP in for Sunlight. They can't really save him for the time being. Nice Sprout will block out, but it's not enough. Too much damage in the end. Afterlife, he's skewered back in. He's gonna make it out at least with a TP, but a trade that Namiga has to be somewhat happy with. Yeah, this lifestealer has been doing pretty much nothing but farming, and so losing him at this point is not good if you are on the side of Gambit. PA continuing to do very well, and so far make up for the fact that this Viper is pretty useless. Immersion sitting bottom lane waiting for something. Double damage. Somebody to show up, somebody else even to help for a kill, as here comes Invoker. He's got the urn. No charges yet, though. Can't really combo. FNG reporting in. Here comes a block. EMP tornado. Nether toxin. Oh no, no untouchable for you. No siree. Good point. Yeah, that's uh, this nether toxin. Saw it last game. This game no different. It, it is a great ability to steal for Rubik. Just 
is what it applies. As Nature's Prophet gonna get some counter warning in. Well played. Middle tower take away of the Observer attack. Ward. Phantom Assassin, though, she got a Vlad's. Of course, has the Empower buff that she's benefiting from, so no surprise to see her on top of the net worth now. And Viper is going to move towards the bottom to push this out, but again, he went to Hannah Midas, so goes back to your point you're making earlier, Elevated, in that uh, both of these cores are going to want to play a bit more of a farm game, especially the Viper more than usual, rather than rushing that Rod of Atos that we've seen so much. As to Hawk. What? Whoa. Hopefully we'll get a replay of that one because, man, how does that happen? He just got soloed by Phantom Assassin. Yeah, I don't understand. Maybe he just got a crit like three times or something like that, but <laughs> I can't imagine how. Viper? Otherwise. He's dead bottom lane. Meanwhile, Phantom Assassin's here, though. Phantom Assassin wants more afterlife. He might be the victim. No crits happening, however, so he's going to spy for now. Devours up. The regen kicking in. Sunlight didn't go too far. Hadouken comes out. Sunlight, though, he's got some help with the Fiend's Grip. Immersion lockdown. Throws in a dagger, and the crit hits. Of course it does. Sunlight is starting to go off now. A solo kill on Lifestealer. Comes spot him. Gets another one. That net worth jumping up a bit. Yeah, and, you know, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe the PA can play the tempo control because he has the Empower, so he doesn't have to go for a Battle Fury, and he can still play the position one, fighting very well early on. Radiant's bottom tower is under attack. Bottom lane, they're collapsing. There's a combo from Invoker, opening up. EMP, chosen one, trying to run. Cold snaps on him, though, with the urn, and that's a powerful combo. Look at that Wrath of Nature, by the way, as it flies through. So that'll finish the job on both. And good coordination from Gamut, taking advantage of those two pushing by themselves. So the good rotations, but still doesn't help answer what this uh, Phantom Assassin is doing. As every time I check that net worth in the top left, it seems like it gets that much more of a lead over the Lifestealer. He's, he's still trying to finish his Radiance, of course. He had about 2,000 gold last time we saw towards the Sacred Relic. I think he already has the recipe. Deso, though, finished on PA. Oof, with the Empower buff. You do not want to fight her right now. Oh, definitely looking just to counter the uh, the life stealer and just be kind of that powerhouse in the mid game going for this Dessa build directly into BKB afterwards and yeah PA certainly could be an issue here going forward even without the rest of his team doing very well <laughs> sunlight he's pinging they know somebody's here oh he finds him Rubik no crit even needed I mean the final crit was just overkill at that point, Swords placed down, and that's a dead Rubik. Yeah, support Rubik this time, but still a find for Phantom Assassin. Blink picked up on Magnus now as well, so he's just applying this Empower over and over again, doing his job in that sense, and now he's the threat of the RP. And they just pinged Roche. They have the Deso, and a Vlad's on the PA. Yeah. Oh, that's much better team at taking objectives than they were last game. Nips it out, though. He's got the Treant in there. I mean, they know this, so <laughs> they obviously see it. They kill it. And, yeah, that might be the cue to fall back unless sunlight. Oop, did he get too cocky? Sleep is put up, trying to help him out. He's sort of the over the trinity low. EMP hits as he falls here in Sonom as well. Sunlight might go down right here. Phantom Strike away. They can't finish the job, though. He's still barely alive on the Oscars, but does he have a way to get out of the blink up? And the Phantom Strike. Great coordination there. Buyback from Viper as he did die in the back lines being a distraction. But the fact that Phantom Assassin lived, that was well played. Bane, however, also goes down. And uh-oh, Afo Ninja, hello. Phantom Assassin jumps back in, gets the quick kill. And it's now the turn of Namiga to fight. That desolate, oh, dumped in. The Fiend's Grip stolen from Ruby, but the RP in response on three heroes. And Sunlight's going to cleave them down. Triple kill for Phantom Assassin. Now it's time for Roshan. You just knew it was coming eventually. Fight goes from an Aphonin, yeah, to an Aphonin, no. <laughs> that's an applause right there. Wow. That's uh, Namiga looking pretty good now. The age is going to be picked up by Phantom Assassin. Yeah, how about that, though? That was You saw the, the Magnus blinking up the cliff to allow sunlight to Phantom Strike to him to stay alive throughout them, and then they popped a shrine, and then we saw what happened. Yeah, it was a beautiful play. I, I'm definitely impressed by Namiga's 
kind of like on the fly teamwork. Even last game, it was looking really, really good until that, you know, the fight where they lost it at the very end. Um, they definitely are on the same page when they're playing these uh, these team fights, and that's one of the best ways to to win Dota right now. It's just team fight better than other people. Yep. This PA is a massive problem now. Forget everything I said. <laughs> yeah, you. Everything doesn't matter anymore of what we said the last 15 minutes. It's just Phantom Assassin is an outright beast. Viper though. This would be a dieback, right? Yeah, he's out for 75 seconds. Good find on him. They smoke in. You see the Spirit Vessel finish on Invoker, so he does have a couple points in Extort now as well, so he does have that full arsenal of his to be spells. Honest, if I was Namiga's Phantom Assassin, I would just ask your Viper not to use Nether Toxin in teamfights ever, because you're just going to give it to the Rubik and make his life harder. Oh, I didn't even think about that. That's a really good point, actually. Yeah, with the break. I'd be like, dude, just, just use your Poison attack. Just eat damage, do not use Nether Toxin, because if I get broken, we could lose the fight. But if I don't get broken, then there's no way I die. Yeah, no, that's, that is interesting, actually. And I, I don't know if that's going to happen, but honestly, you do make a great point, because if Rubik has another Toxin, it's a different story in terms of killing Phantom Assassin, for sure. Uh, they do have a lot of magic damage, so I don't know if that miss is really hurting them the most looking at it, but it's still, those right clicks do add up in the fights. Um, Invoker, Axe is still a bit away, again, going for this full Spirit Vessel first, as we see in the Squaw Specs Invokers, but I assume he's going to still pick up the Axe. It's safe to say a very core item on the hero. And then those... can be done for the PA. Okay, that's, that's huge. This is that really good time for Namiga now capitalize and yeah, not even 20 minutes in they're smoked and they're they hunting. have eyes they have eyes on this uh life stealer yeah we see Rose the vision fiend script oh he got exposed just a little too early yep he was he was too confident that he had the opening but that would have been a big big kill for Namiga. they'll take the bounty runes though and they got a four. Gotcha. Oh, well played. Double damage. Double damage it's taken by Doom. I mean, they see that, so it was picked up. But Shadow Blade now on Doom, by the way, too. So he's got his initiation. I wonder if he's just going to try to go with Silver Edge, actually. Because, again, he can't rely on the Nether Toxin, 100%. Yeah, potentially. Just needs that initiation ability as well. And it's a little hard to just kind of get yourself into a good position without being invisible sometimes, so. Radiant's I like it. Tower is under attack. And it, it goes back to, there's, you mentioned the PA, but both Enchantress and Viper having a break is really good. At all three of these cores, yes. you would like it. So I could definitely see that Radiant's coming out. Tower Mid tower goes down for the Dire. You have Gambit pushing bottom, though. Although they're not going to get the tower kill just yet. They're getting a little Suspicious with the missing from the mid lane now. Dyer's structures are and instead, Lifestealer heal TP to the top Dyer's lane. God, look at that net worth over PA 14.5. And Lifestealer is second with barely Dyer's 10k, not even. Oh, Phantom Assassin finds Invoker! Uh, half life to zero. He just walked up. Half an inch was looking somewhere else. He, he just. <laughs> simply yeah. walked up to him and attacked him. It's probably using the curry or buying something at the secret shop or something like that. That hurts. Yeah, more than one way. This PA is just going off. She's going to, I think I saw an S and a Y she was building. Okay, so have some status resistance built in. Just a solid mid-game fighting item. Nature's Prophet's done a good job of getting some uh, vision throughout the map. You also see all the sentries throughout <laughs> that he's placed. Counter warding. And now they're smoked without Invoker. But he can join. Yeah, let's see. How do they actually take these fights? They need to find... I don't know. Find a Doom on the PA just to... 
to make him immobile? Or do they find a demon on the Magnus to stop the RP? They have a lot of things to look out for, and the Evoker needs to keep his eyes out for the Fiend's Grip mm -hmm. as well. So definitely pretty hard for Gambit to take these team fights right now. Yeah, it, it is not straightforward. I, I see what you're saying. There's not the obvious Doom target, exactly, because even Bane is... If he gets that Fiend's Grip off a Lifestealer, even just a couple of seconds, that could be a big difference maker in these fights. So yep, a lot of things you're worrying about when it comes to taking them. The uh, the gem purchased by Magnus we saw right there too. So now with the Shadow Blade, you have Invoker Ghost Walk, a little less useful, and on top of all that with the counter warding, of course. So good investment. Yeah, I expected you get to smoke up here again, maybe clear out this bottom wave and then take take a fight with the gem. They haven't really been able to utilize the Aegis yet. But Radiance Top Tower is under attack. Just need an opportunity. Yeah, but doing a pretty good job of kind of transitioning from playing aggressive early to we're fighting. just split pushing. We're fighting here. Life Stealer inside Doom, by the way, but he slept up. They see him with the name is now. He gets out of it somehow, but the Fiends keep following it up. Out pops Life Stealer. Doom, he's gonna die before he gets to Doom off at this point. RP, he gets it on nothing! He went to pull in but he was stopped, so RP's nothing in the end. It's a one-for-one -one trade so far. Immersion, he gets the counter Fiends grip. It's not gonna matter though. He's there by himself in a two-for-one. Going to go in the way of Namiga. And, I mean, considering they completely whiffed an RP, they still come out on top at least. Yeah, it just shows Thanks. that Gambit is really not ready to fight right now. They, just, they don't have any answers to this PA. Uh, the Aegis is gone, but even there, that was just a purely defensive Fiend's Grip to allow his team to TP out. No Axe on Invoker. It's... Hero does not, this is not a game. When team fights is a different story. When uh, ganks and stuff, just having the spirit vessel is great, but he needs an Ags when it comes to these team fights. <laughs> he cannot fight effectively as Invoker without that. So he uh, he was about 3,000 when we saw him last, so I assume it's about another minute or so. In fact, we're going to see here as they find a kill on Zitrax, potentially. Goes down the Nether Toxin, going for the turn kill. Alpha Ninja, he's dead. Wow. <laughs> Okay, we'll take that trade. 2v1, although Immersion got nearly 900 gold for that, wow. That's yeah, that's the uh, that's the new calculation for how kills work. It's like, uh, there's the formula involves what your rank is, whether you're ahead. And so, if you're one of the lowest HP, or lowest net worth heroes on the losing team, you're gonna get a massive boost in your gold. Especially if you kill a high network here on the other side. Doom up on PA. She just runs and pops a shrine, though. They do lose the Bane. But she's fine. Something I did overlook, um, and to, to correct myself from earlier, you know, saying how the break, it's good against PA, but not, like, great. Because I was talking about the, the blur. The coup de gras is also deactivated. So that that is actually yep. <laughs> even the bigger part of it. Yeah, reduces her damage a lot. And I mean, it just goes back to like, just just don't use it, Viper. <laughs> it's, it actually is really bad against your whole team. So yeah. giving it to Rubik is terrible. I mean, Immersion's had it nearly this whole game, it seems like. So I don't, I just don't know if that's going to be a thing. But you just sp you spam painting your Viper every time he uses it in fights. <laughs> You're like, no, bad idiot. <laughs> Why you do this? Invoker Ag's still not here. He's, uh, needs the one component before. Let's get in there. Farming away. And nearly 19,000 net worth, though, on PA. That's, uh, wow. That's, what, 10K plus more than the Invoker? <laughs> I didn't realize how low Invoker was on net worth shards. That's, <laughs> yep. yeah, that's rough. And now he's dead, apparently. He's dead at the mid lane. They found him. So the Ags is still going to be stalled on F and Ninja, and we're 27 minutes in. That's just, it's inexcusable. You cannot have, Invoker is not a hero right now, not nearly what he can be at this point in the game. Yeah. And that's yeah. Roshan. It's gonna be another Aegis, very close to MKB on the PA, which means that Radiance Burn doesn't matter even without the BKB. See the odds right there. 
dipping uh, a fair amount, but still not as close as I've uh, – again, Amiga's playing very well. Like, even the first game, they, they contested ultimately in the losing effort, but <laughs> the way I oh, would see it, I would almost say this is even. It's top. Yeah, Namiga played super well. I mean, until that throw at the very end. Astral did not have an RP. Was on cooldown. I guess he used it. To, oh, oh, they probably killed Invoker with it. That's what it was. Yeah. It's going to happen off camera. Um, but yeah, 1xbet.com. If you'd like to put a bet on set odds. Pretty good with Namiga right now as far as game two goes. Radiance Especially. Top tower, is under attack. Uh, top tower, though, it's going to fall. Sunlight lit in the fall. way, of course. He's 22. Of course, 25, that coup de grace talent. He also gets Avalanche dies again. And what's going on over here? Fishman's getting low, but gets uh, another sleep off at the last second. Fiends Grip blocking out Zitrax. That was stolen by a Rubik, but now Immersion turns around. Ghost after. Oh, my God. Lifestealer was there. Phantom Assassin shows up, though, and it's a different story. As soon as PA shows up, Everything changes if it was even looking <laughs> remotely decent for Gambit. Yeah, that was like Gambit's like, oh, okay, we we found like the weak skinny kids, and then their big tough friend shows up, and he's like, what are you doing to my boys? <laughs> and that very deep voice, yeah. <laughs> Twenty-year-old brother. Exactly. Yeah, big shows bro. Up at the middle school gym. <laughs> Mess it with my brother. I don't think so. And they're just gonna push with this. Invoker's back up. Who cares? Yeah, exactly. I, Invoker, do not get close, or else a dagger's gonna one-shot you. And he throws out a combo. Nice disarm. So he can, of course, Invoker can stall a little bit, but not much more than that. FNG's keeping the bottom lane pushed in with his creeps, but. Mids. Okay, nice sprout too. That's deflecting sunlight. Oh, he gets very low here. Actually, okay, they're gonna pop the Aegis. Oh, okay. Yeah, I I don't know about this MKB. I feel like having a Satanic would be way better here. He doesn't really need the extra damage, and he has a BKB to deal with the Radiance. So what else is he trying to dodge? Yeah, true. Or what else is he trying to hit? Oh, they do him. They sunlight's in trouble. He's in a lot of trouble. He's just dead. We Namiga, saw not again. very similar story to last game. Chosen one. He's also in trouble now. Trying to force Staff over the ledge and survive. Sun strikes. I don't Make think it's going to hit. As off to the right, Fishman's also running. Afterlife in pursuit. Dusted up, though. Comes out. And Radiance Chosen one is just like, all right, final killer axe. <laughs> it's not going to happen. Actually... Smart, but not going to work. So they do have buyback, so this is not that's similar in that sense, but uh, Nimiga. Uh, this is uh, this is not good no. if you're Nimiga. How much gold did he just feed away on PA? Oh, good point. Yeah, check that. 963 gold to the Invoker. Ooh. Well, he has his axe coming out now. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. So that's, uh, yeah, that's his... Uh, Similar, we see the tides turning a little bit. Ag's finished. There's the Manta style into Hawk. Again, Ag's Invoker, completely different game for him now. Yeah, and more than that, they suddenly have lost all map control. They're going to lose two tier two towers, another big part of the gold swing. And they're able to ward up the enemy jungle. They're able to farm up the enemy jungle so that when Namiga respawns, they don't have any farm to get. And all the lanes are now pushed in as well, so. This buys a huge amount of time for Gambit. Half an inch is going to farm up the top lane, pushing in a little bit more for uh, getting back here. Tornado's up. Magnus. I haven't seen ever since that really big RP earlier. Uh, that one. I haven't seen another one since. You mentioned the MKB on Phantom Assassin. Absolutely. I mean, Satanic. Would have felt pretty good, both with the status resistance as well as that sustain. The <laughs> last thing she needs is more damage, as we've seen, but yeah, maybe next it. she'll go it. AC, Satanic, both of those way better. It actually makes no sense. I'm, I'm kind of pissed that he has that item, to be honest. <laughs> Love it. He already has in power. Like, what, what do you need damage for? You're one-shotting everybody already. Just think of that even quicker one-shot. Now it's... It, the only thing is the evasion. It goes back to that, and like, like you're saying, it's when 
You pop EKB, it helps. Now, there is a 20 talent on Lifestealer, so he does get the 20% evasion from that. So there's there's a little bit of value there. Radiant are scanning. But yes, the argument for a Satanic, I'm just playing devil's advocate here. I, I do think Satanic is more obvious choice. Now, granted, he has another 3,000 gold saved up already, so we'll probably see it coming up soon. Unless it's going to be like a Daedalus. He's going to buy another MKB. He needs that extra damage. <laughs> it's rapier time. Probably not. Axe for Rubik. He's working on it now against support Rubik, so much later for him. But if he can manage that, him and Invoker will be slinging spells like crazy. And this is actually really awkward because he has a Vlads on him, so Satanic means that he's going to have to replace the, the Vlads, so it's a little bit, a little bit awkward. The Hawk. I think I saw, yep, the plate mail. Going to go and on Assault Kuras himself. Uh, Shiva's on Doom. Well, this Radiant team getting much more bulky. In fact, Invoker also going to Shiva's. Yeah. Makes I mean, sense. That's how you deal with BA. You just get a bunch of armor on everybody. And if she's not, you know, cleaving people down super quickly, then she definitely falls off, especially as BKB wears down. I definitely think that there's a chance here for, for Gambit at this point. That push seems to be the Achilles heel of Namiga so far mm -hmm. in this tournament. And you saw Enchantress right there. This We're getting to a point where she's going to start getting uh, more core heavy herself. I had to pull Hurricane Pike, was working on her own MKB, actually. And then an Ags to follow, even. So that's still ways, ways away, but her... Uh, Impetus, her right click is going to be pretty scary. But for now, they continue to push out as my stream just froze on me. Come on, stream. Refresh. One second. I assume you're still good. Yep. Immersion, carrying the jam, pushing out top lane. All right. I got it refreshed. We're good. This should make my life easier. Yeah, he's still pushing it. He's level 20. No one's up there right now to respond to this. You see Viper. Quietly, Viper's also been doing very well with the net worth. He's actually second now. In fact, he finds Affininge. Not able to follow up, though. Sprout blocking. Satanic is on Phantom Assassin, by the way. She does have it. So, no more Vlads for their team, I assume? Uh, somebody else had a Vlads, I think. I was somebody else picked one up. They were clicking around. I'm not sure who had it. That was F and G on Gambit. So oh, was I don't it? think there is a Vlads on Namiga anymore. Okay, you're right, yeah. I just profit at it. <clears throat> There's Viper's items. He ended up going to the Solar Crest, so even more enhancement for the PA, potentially. And his own BKB. FNG, though, even we've talked about this with the whole Nature's Prophet support, and even though he's a five support, he could still do a lot around the map. Be, uh, be very annoying for you. Yeah, absolutely. He's creating lots of pressure, pushing out these lanes. Gambit is doing a really good job managing their waves, and that could be a big problem for an Amiga as they only really have the PA with some power and the Magnus. Um, Viper, pretty good at pushing waves as well, but... Their wave clear is really not that great. Roshan is up. And this game, it would be the second Roshan, I believe. Radiant scans it, thinking it could be happening. Not the case, though. But they are in the area, so both teams heading over there now. CPA will clear up the mid lane, make it obvious where she's at. She already has another 4,000 gold. She is 25, so the coup de grace talent, I, I assume she got, is uh, online now. And I think she's the only 25 in the game at this point. Yeah, she definitely is. With the way this has been going. What did Invoker get, by the way? Can you confirm that as far as his 15 talent? Uh, Yeah, he went for the cold snap cooldown. Yeah, cold snap, okay. Isn't that the Ghost Walk as well? 
Uh, no, was Ghost Walk is actually at 10. It he is He went 10. for the okay. Chaos Meteor instead. Yeah, that's the usual. Yep. Okay. Life Stealer jumps inside somebody to the left. I think they're smoked, yeah. Looks like he's inside Doom again. Getting close, it wrecks. All right, Zivrex hits 25, so he has his silence now with another toxin. No, they're not going to go in all the way. Obviously, not wanting to run uphill. They do not have vision up here. So, the smart decision from Gambit, you could say, is they uh, do back off and not going to risk it. Both teams just very timid around this Roshan and a treant fighting a creep. <laughs> And Zitrex is going to go inside and start putting some damage. Bane's caught, though, and Tornado up. He's going to get a four staff to Hawks on top. Rage wearing off soon, though. Doesn't want to overcommit to it. And no, he got overcommitted on, though, to Hawk. He's getting beat down by the PA. He jumps in one of the creeps. He's good for now. Can they kill the creep? They can. He has to pop out. He cannot be saved. He's up for 85. He has a buyback, though, and he uses it. Fiend's Grip locks down Afterlife. He got a Doom off on Sunlight, by the way, but Doom is dead. Magnus imp he hit the FNG with the RP, but that's it. So not the craziest one. Immersion, though, he's also going to fall in the midst of the fight. Ghost Scepter saves him a little bit. The just Hawk buys the back. time. Yeah. And can't rejoin the fight. He just runs away. The Hawk and Afterlife both buy back, but yeah, very spread out, so they never were really there as a team. And Amiga goes right into the Roshan pit. Yeah, this, I mean, Life Stealer just shredded. <laughs> it's not often we see Life Stealer melt like he has been in this game, but he needs farm too. That's the thing. It's not like he's just completely under farmed. He's been the top farm on his team for the whole game. Just PA has been that much better, better even with the Empower buff and things like the yeah, MKB. The PA is just a better hero than Life Stealer at this point in the game. That's always been the case. That's why it was picked against the Life Stealer. So he needs some help from his Invoker. That's really what it comes down to. It's not Life Stealer's job to kill the PA. It's the Invoker's job to control the PA while Life Stealer kills everybody else, and then they can all gang up on the PA afterwards. And the Doom was placed on the PA, which is good, but it was a little bit late in the fight after Life Stealer was already pretty much dead. Bane gets the bounty rune. We see Doom running over with the Shadow Blade, but unable to actually catch up. Invoker trying to finish that Shiva's. It might be delivered out to him, actually. Yep. So at least he has that now. The mitigation, but oh, okay, it just doesn't matter. You got some more armor for that. He survived. Yeah, so one so far hit. behind. He's really been is. so far behind all game. Yeah, this has not been a pick uh, <laughs> that's worked for Gambit at all this game. And again, maybe, maybe trying some things out. Like I said, I haven't seen Alpha Ninja play uh, the Invoker as of recent with Gambit. Willing to try some stuff out here again in this matchup, up one nothing, but. Um, wasn't a tough match against PA in the mid lane. Overall, it, it goes back to it just has not been a good hero. Simple no. as that. Yeah, I mean, he picked it into the matchup, which was already kind of questionable. And then they just fed Sunlight five or six kills in the early game, which got him off to a really good start. Yeah. He's just spamming the triple specter dagger. There's, there's a pressure on Afterlife, by the way. He jumps in with the Doom. Sunlight melts. He's Gonna die here, Aegis. Brings him back up. Afterlife pops Refresher. So he has another Doom. RP is still ready, though. Yeah, and there's a Refresher Shard on Astral. So two RPs potentially available. But not finding a good spot. It feels like he should probably just go in and try an RP to Hawk. And he's gonna have to go in eventually. They're spreading. Gamma's doing a good job of it. He only catches Immersion. He has a Refresher that was mentioned. So he uses it. Rubik buys back. In the back lines, FNG. The scattered Astral running around. The Fiend Script catches the Hawk. The Hawk's locked down. They can't stop Bane. And Voker's trying to run away right now from Viper. Eventually gets stopped by Yules. But the Hawk just has to run. Yeah, he still has it. The Doom is up. There's that second Doom up on sideline again. So the Hawk's trying to get it up to him. But Viper, good luck against him. It's not going to work. Double kill. Dead uh, Life Stealer. And the RP finally comes out in Afterlife. And Afterlife going to be shredded to pieces by Sunlight. GG's are called. Namiga takes game two.
We are going to our third and final game here in the semifinal matchup. Yeah, it's just, uh, just the PA problems. You, know, you gave him Magnus PA, and just didn't really have any counters <laughs> to the PA, to be honest. Mm -hmm. Pretty pretty simple as that. It was, uh, I would say, it was a draft win, and then the the early game just went so poorly when they started losing lives to the PA. Yeah, and I'm a huge fan of Invoker. Personally, my most played hero. Even I, I love to play it. I love to watch it, but it's it just did not do anything here. <laughs> so I think uh, you know the trial was fun, but maybe stay away from Invoker for now. Just not a hero in the in the overall meta. I mean, when you, if you have an Invoker player, it's I guess it's supposed to, it, it could potentially always kind of be a hero. I mean, it's still the last it, picking but... into PA is one of the hardest counters to the hero of the lady stage. Sure, there's there's that. That's part of it. Um, but in the end, Namiga, absolutely all the credit to them. They they even looked good in game one in that losing effort. They they were on the verge of possibly winning that one. So the way I see it, I don't care what the odds say. This this is a going to potentially be a very close game three, and uh, I could see either outcome as a result. So we're in for a good one. That also means uh, the later series, again, going to be delayed a little bit more. Yeah, let's have to finish off uh, this one here with game three. But OG – um, versus Kaban will be or no excuse me OG versus Singularity will be happening later on today Kaban uh, losing NFP yesterday uh, OG versus Team Singularity that'll be the series to follow and looking forward to that as well but we got Gambit versus Namiga game number three for the WePlay Dota 2 Tug of War Radiance Edition tournament brought to you by WePlay I'm Breaky CPK joined by Elevated stay tuned guys we got game number two game number three even coming up next.